Welcome to this video weather briefing. This is issued on March 5, 2015. The main topic for this briefing is El Nino conditions, which have been identified in the Pacific, whereas an El Nino advisory is in effect. We will take a look at the state of the climate, the current drought, and a little outlook for the rest of March. So how does El Nino affect the weather across California? Well, we're not expecting much impact from this weak El Nino. But as shown in this diagram, El Nino can have a significant impact on the jet stream across the Pacific Ocean. How are we doing so far? The column in the middle here is the precipitation for up to March 3rd, 2015. You can see most areas have received about 40% of what they should for this time of the year, with San Diego being the wettest location at 63%. The deficits as we started this year were significant anywhere between one to two seasons, as shown on the left and the right. So our drought, because of these large deficits, remains firmly in place. In fact, 94% of California is between D2 and D4, we have seen some improvement along the north coast and virtually no change for the rest of California. Here's a look at the percent of normal across the United States. This really gives an indication of where the storm track has been as well. Across California and the west, most areas are 50 to 70 percent of normal. Only in some of the mountain locations of California do you get closer to normal and that does not include the Sierra Nevada, where it's been very dry. Speaking of the storm track, and this shows the actual storm track that has occurred since October 1st. You can see the Pacific has been active with a strong jet stream, and however, it's gone up and over most of California. There has been a piece of that jet stream that's carved across Southern California and resulted in that heavier precipitation for the San Diego region. Also note where the jet stream has dove across the Great Lakes and across southern New England as shown here. This is an average since October 1st of the jet stream pattern. Let's look a little closer for Southern California. This is percent of normal since October 1st. You can see some of our mountain regions in terms of overall precipitation are running normal or a little bit above. Most of the region, however, is sitting in the middle ground anywhere from 40 to 60 percent of normal in those orange and yellow shades. How much precipitation did we have most recently? Well, here's a look. You can see San Diego and Riverside County did the best. Those areas receiving widespread one to two inches of precipitation. There was an area where there was much less in the San Bernardino Mountains and part of the Inland Empire, as shown in the light blue. All right, let's talk about El Nino conditions. The El Nino advisory was issued today, March 5th. And why? Well, across the Pacific Ocean, we've seen warming that really occurred since last spring, but... The warming settled out during the early fall, and now most recently we've seen some warming. Most of this warming has been occurring in the far western Pacific near the Dateline in the El Nino region. Here is a map that will show it nicely for you. Along the Dateline, so areas west of Hawaii and along the equatorial Pacific Ocean, considerable warm water is in place. Also note the very warm water that has pushed eastward in the Pacific Ocean and this is banked up along the Baja region much above normal water temperatures. We think this has also played a role in some of the intense rainfall we've seen along the coast locally. When you look across the entire globe you can see the eastern Pacific is considerably above normal and then the El Nino region there about half of the region is above normal. We also take a look at region below the surface of the ocean and we can see warm water is in place. So this is basically a reservoir of warm water that likely will surface and sustain the weak El Nino conditions. What are our computer models showing for El Nino? Well, they have been showing us 
getting into this weak El Nino. In fact, we've discussed this for several months with the expectation of weak El Nino conditions developing in the winter, and they finally have developed. The forecast projection for the summer into the fall expects these weak El Nino conditions to continue, but that may strengthen as we go into the summer and fall. Here's a look at a collection of models run from the climate forecast system. This here shows the average of the models in the dashed line. So from now into the summer, it shows the weak El Nino sustaining and strengthening a little bit. Also shown on the right is the map of the region that we monitor in the El Nino zone near the equatorial Pacific Ocean. All right, let's take a look at an outlook for the period March 10th through 17th. This here shows areas across the country where precipitation is expected to occur during that period. The reason being is the jet stream as shown on the right is going to be cutting across most of the northern part of the country. It'll take a dip across California, then turn northward and then again go across the Mid-Atlantic region. So the area shown it in the orange and red, highest probability of precipitation during that period. And you can see the chance of precipitation extending all the way down into Southern California. Here's the official forecast. This also reflects what we just looked at. So the probability of precipitation best over Central and Northern California during the period March 12 through 18 is shown here. That's the day eight through 14. Always check out the latest hazards at the information at the link above. And most of this information can be found from the Climate Prediction Center that was shown in this presentation. Also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in to this latest update on the El Nino and climate conditions and our latest outlook.